Welcome to the New Beginnings Show. This is presented to you by New Beginnings Christian Community, which is located at 1130 East Market Street in Charlottesville, Virginia. And our worship service is at 11 o'clock, and we welcome everyone to come. Come as you are and grow as you come is our motto. Let us now pray that God will bless this service. Oh Lord, we are all hungry. Some of us just need food for our bodies, others for our souls. You have come to feed us through one another. Give us generous hearts so we can see the starving people around us. May we share our food and our friendship with everyone. Show us how to open our hands and hearts to those who are in need in our community and around the world. You are the God of abundance who fed a half a million people with manna and quail for 40 years in the desert. Your son had compassion on the 5,000 men, plus numbers of women and children who gathered around him. Though they only had five loaves and two fish through your miraculous love for everyone, Jesus was able to feed every stomach and have 12 baskets left over. Take away our fear, fear of scarcity. Fill us with faith in you, knowing that if we share our blessings and love with one another, we will always have plenty left over. In Jesus' name and power, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our announcement this week are as follows. Alcoholics Anonymous meets at the church at 6 p.m. on Tuesdays, and the New Beginnings TV show shows at eight o'clock on channel 13 on Tuesdays. Reverend Greg teaches Samuel the third chapter, the reign of David and Bible study on Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening rather from six to 7.30 p.m. The food ministry is one to four on Fridays and one to 10, 10 to two on Saturdays. The New Beginnings TV show also shows again at one o'clock on Saturdays on channel 13 and on Saturdays at one p at five p.m. on Channel Thirteen. On Sundays, the uh, Narco Narcotics Anonymous Speakers Forum meets at the church from six to seven p.m. Our food pantry, in addition to being open on Fridays and Saturdays, we allow people after worship to get produce, baked goods, canned goods, and dry goods in our fellowship hall. That also includes meat. I'd like to recall to your attention the fact that during the height of the pandemic, very few food pantries were open and ours was one that did stay open. Despite Charlottesville being a lovely, beautiful, ugly city, it is a food desert for many people. And so I remind you that as the, of the man of principles, as God gives it to us to give out, we give out to people so that they can eat. Amen. I'd like to welcome everybody from not just Charlottesville and Virginia and the United States, but everyone around the world to the New Beginnings television program for the month of June, the year 2023, and also to New Beginnings Christian community here in Charlottesville, Virginia. I am Reverend Greg, and will bring you the message for this month entitled, Hunger. I will be using Isaiah 58.10 and Proverbs 22.9 from the NIV translations. Let us open with a word of prayer. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Blessed is the name of the Lord. May we look upon others as children look upon others, seeing only the beauty in God's creation and allow each of us here today to stand up, step forward and spread the love of Jesus Christ in all of creation. Let every one of us become a beacon of light to serve others, not because the Bible tells us to do so, or simply to feel good, but rather to let our hearts shine upon others as the love of God shines upon us. Let us all be true and faithful servants in our community, offering food to the hungry and bread to the poor. Let us be united by our shining love and not divided by our greed and selfish desires. Amen. First, let us begin with some hunger fast facts. There is more than enough food produced in the world to feed everyone on the planet. About 690 million people worldwide go to bed hungry, 
every single night. Small farmers, herders, and fishermen produce about 70% of the global food supply, yet they are especially vulnerable to food insecurity. Poverty and hunger are most acute among royal popula rural populations. Conflict is a major driver of hunger. The UN estimates that 122 million of 144 million stunted children live in countries affected by conflict. An estimated 14 million children under the age of five worldwide suffer from severe acute malnutrition, also known as severe wasting. Yet only 25% of severely malnourished children have access to life-saving treatment. Around the world, more than enough food is produced to feed the global population, but more than 690 million people still go hungry including here in Charlottesville. After steadily declining for a decade, world hunger is on the rise, especially after the COVID pandemic, affecting 8.9% of people globally. From 2018 to 2019, the number of undernourished people grew by 10 million, and there are nearly 60 million more undernourished people now than there were in 2014. Hunger is strongly interconnected with poverty, and it involves interactions among an array of social, political, demographic, and societal factors. People living in poverty frequently face household food insecurity, use inappropriate care practices, and live in unsafe environments that have low access to quality water, sanitation, and hygiene and inadequate access or availability to health services and education, all of which contribute to hunger. Now, let us look at what the Bible tells us regarding hunger and especially helping those who are hungry. If you have your Bible with you, turn to Isaiah 58 verse 10. This is from the NIV translation. And you offer your compassion to the hungry and satisfy the famished creature. Then shall your light shine in the darkness and your gloom shall be like noonday. Our other passage for today comes from Proverbs 22, nine, also from the NIV translation. It reads as follow. The generous man and woman is blessed for he or she gives of her or his bread to the poor. So what is Isaiah trying to tell us in this passage? Isaiah brings the people of Israel back to their roots with encouragement to plant and build and grow and to help others do the same. In all of their attempts at worship and fasting, the people had been crying out to God, waiting for a response of how good of a job they're doing. They wanted to be patted on the back. The beginning of the text echoes their frustrations that they are not getting the attention they feel they deserve. Isaiah says it's because their worship has not been complete. By offering them the missing pieces, Isaiah helps to guide the people of Israel back home and into a connectional relationship with God. Very important, a relationship with God, one that is only found when connecting with all not just some, but all of God's children. The prophet concludes with the promise that when this kind of worship is done, in light of what they embrace, light shall break forth like the dawn and the light shall rise in the darkness. You know, even though their intentions may have been genuine, they had missed some of the point of what worship is all about. And so God sends the prophet Isaiah to help continue to bring them back in line with God's way of thinking, not their way of thinking. Isaiah critiques their worship practices, particularly their fasting, as self-serving and hollow, pretending to be righteous while allowing injustice to continue in their own backyards. He offers stern reminders that fasting and other worship is not about just going through the motions. It's not about excessive piety and fancy shows. It's about what happens after that, 
specifically how they live together in the world. Rather than being focused on hunger as a spiritual practice of fasting, Isaiah indicates that their worship, even their fasting, should make them hungry for something more, breaking the bonds of injustice. Going further, the prophet gives several simple concrete ways that they can accomplish this. He identifies basic human needs, food, shelter, clothing, and indicates that these are the hunger pangs of the world that need undoing, calling upon the people of Israel to be a part of that process. They are called to share bread, offer shelter, and cover those in need even at the risk of exposing oneself. Now, what does the writer of Proverbs 22, 9 tell us? Generosity guarantees blessings. Generosity guarantees blessings. It's in the Bible. Here is priceless wisdom. Do you look at, for opportunities to give? Do you give freely? Do you get excited about giving? God loves a generous giver. If you give to the poor, you lend to Almighty God, and he repays you well. God will bless the person who gives eagerly and generously to the poor. God looks out for the poor because he withheld from them the abilities and opportunities he gave others. It is not enough to think kindly about them. Oh, we'll pray for them. You must actually give and help. God will bless the person who gives freely and generously beyond all expectations, giving creatively and spontaneously. So how does New Beginnings Christian community fulfill the focus of Isaiah and the promises of Proverbs? Let's take a moment and look at this two minute video produced for our food ministry. We are facing a food crisis in Charlottesville. The price of food has risen 7.9%, the largest 12-month increase since 1981. Rent has risen 72% over the last seven years. Families are struggling to pay for both higher rent and groceries. Our church began our food ministry in 2003. When donated food proved insufficient, we joined the Blue Ridge Food Bank, which connected us with Food Lion and Walmart, who give us their surplus groceries weekly. Hi, I'm Wanda Cabell, and I work at the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank, and New Beginnings is one of our partner agencies, and they have been a partner agency for quite some time, and they do a wonderful job, starting with Pastor Liz and the rest of the crew. We appreciate them. Our shoppers have tripled to 300 a week, requiring us to be open four days each week instead of just Saturday afternoons. Our electric bill for our five freezers and two refrigerators utilities has also tripled. Our volunteers are all vaccinated and masked. On the advice of our shoppers, we let only one masked shopper in at a time to select whatever food each one wants. We deliver to those who are homebound. Local farmers donated their surplus produce, as well as Panera donates their bagels. We have volunteers from Region 10, from Congregation Beth Israel, the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Charlottesville, and several Christian churches, including our church. Pastor Brother Matthew Akonmu of the Ghanaian Deeper Life Bible Church picks up whatever we have left over on Saturday afternoons, distributing food from his van around the Fifeville neighborhood. To me, it has been a real, 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 real blessing to serve the people in the community. Social services, the International Rescue Committee, and the local hospitals keep sending us hungry people. This year has been the most challenging of our 19 years of food ministry. You can help by supporting our Feeding the Hungry in our community. So what is the food pantry at New Beginnings Christian Community all about? First, and many of these things the average person may not even know. Maybe people in this congregation might not even know it. Maybe people in the community might not know this. We receive fresh produce, deli products, baked goods, and meat from Walmart, Food Line at Monticello, Food Line at Pantops, and Giant at Pantops every single Friday morning, including holidays. It takes a good number of dedicated volunteers to accomplish such an enormous task each week. 
especially on holidays. Contrary to some beliefs, our weekly food donations have actually increased exponentially to between 2,000 and 3,000 pounds every Friday. Imagine those numbers. That is a ton or more. The number is staggering. However, weekly visitors to the pantry have also increased dramatically, now up between 300 and 400 individuals on just Friday and Saturday alone. We have seen an increase of individuals to whom English is not their first language. Refugees from Afghanistan, Ukraine, Syria, in addition to many migrants and undocumented individuals from numerous South and Central American countries. People who struggle with the language, struggle with getting food. Many are coming to New Beginnings Christian Community Food Pantry. As diversified as the visitors are who visit the food pantry at New Beginnings Christian Community as a supplemental source of food, so too is the volunteer core who give their time and resources to pick up the food at those four locations, sort and weigh all of the food, organize the food into bins on large tables, and then assist the guests with distribution. A different set of volunteers is set aside for each of those particular activities, so the volunteer core is quite large. One important aspect of the volunteers is their willingness to listen. They're not here just to simply give out food, but oftentimes they will sit for up to an hour and listen, sometimes with the guests crying to show sympathy and to show help in needing of other needs except for food. Sometimes more than the food itself, the visitor needs a listening ear and a compassionate heart. Our volunteers come from various churches, synagogues, meeting houses, and places of worship in addition to New Beginnings. In fact, most of the volunteers are from other communities. Most of the volunteers originally came to gather in a unifying means when the COVID-19 pandemic hit the area. And in order to stay open, and as was mentioned by Pastor Brenda, most of the food pantries closed, at least for a short period of time. For us to stay open, we put out a public notice for volunteers and the response was overwhelming, despite the hazards that the pandemic posted. Some people may have even put their lives at risk just to come out to be able to hand out food. Safety precautions were put into effect, including masks and, society and social distancing. Three years after all this was initiated, this core of volunteers has mostly stayed together and have become like a family, not just to me, not just to the pastors, not just amongst themselves, but to the guests who come here every single week, constantly helping each other as well as those in need of food. Isn't that what Isaiah is telling us in the, in the passage? To offer your compassion to the hungry and satisfy the famished creature. Isn't that what the writer of Proverbs says when he wrote, the generous person, the generous woman, the generous man is blessed for they give of their bread to the poor. Isn't that what these two writers tell us and many other writers in the Bible? Each week, I am personally blessed and inspired by the relationships and the interactions which occur between the volunteers and the guests, between the volunteers themselves and between the guests themselves who come for food. There should be no hunger in a world so abundant, but unfortunately, the statistics do not lie. At least we can take the lead to eliminate hunger, one person, one individual at a time and you can help as well. Check out our website for more information on volunteering and donations if you would like to know more about what our food pantry does. In conclusion, I would like to say it is time to rise up, all of us. Rise up, rise up, Isaiah says, shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show that you are a Christian, not say that you're a Christian, but actually live like Christ. 
This is like a call to war. Israel is rallied and redirected to a greater understanding of faithfulness. It's more than just going to church. It's more than just waving your hands. It's a lifestyle. God wants to take their passion and fervor that they have demonstrated in their worship and fasting efforts and encourage them to take that same energy out into the world where it's needed. Rise up, Matthew says. You are the salt of the earth, bringing out the goodness and full flavors, spicing things up in the world to reflect the full potential of what God has created. Finally, rise up, Jesus calls. You are the light of the world, a light not meant to be hidden or kept private, but to be shared so that the very glory of the Lord will be seen in each and every one of us. People of God, everyone watching this TV broadcast today, whether it's here at New Beginnings Christian Community, whether it's in Charlottesville, whether it's in California, whether it's in Uganda, whoever is watching this, because it will be on YouTube, it will be seen around the world. People of God, rise up and live like Christ and let's combat this problem of world hunger. Amen. Jesus said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was imprisoned and you visited me. This is our calling. Let us go forth and serve the Lord who loves us so much that he died for us. He stretched out his arms and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And let us do for the Lord, care for one another, love one another, feed one another in body and soul. Amen, amen, amen.